you can overdose on these and increasingly in clinics yeah. we're seeing people who are self-medicating from the internet you can get very high dose tablets from the internet you know which seems very strange and these are very very dangerous because you you do accumulate the vitamin d in your body it doesn't uh, just get peed out like some other b vitamins so you will get more and more levels and that can cause real problems uh, nerve problems muscle problems and uh, i think it's it's an increasing you know area because because it's called a vitamin people think it's harmless it's not just getting passed straight out if i don't need it correct that's right it does depend on the form you're taking it mm -hmm. but in general that that's correct because uh it, it does build up and it is dangerous so again it comes back to this idea of taking a supplement in a chemical form is often different to you know you can't get too much from sunlight or from food mm -hmm. I think so that's in that really sense, it's important. more like a drug, right? Like I could take paracetamol, that's great. It, it, it you know helps with my headache, but I know that if I have loads of there, it you know it could really hurt me or kill me. And so you're saying that I should think about vitamin D a bit more like that. Like it's it's not a sort of there's no downside to taking um, too much, which I, I feel is how I've understood most vitamins because when you look on the stores these days, they have all these different levels, yes. right? And you just get to choose yourself whether you have one level, the super level, and it always seems like, well, you should get the super duper level, right? Why wouldn't you get the most? Yeah, so yeah. You, when you go and buy Tylenol, you're not allowed to buy, you know, yeah. 500 uh, of those uh, tablets, but you can buy unlimited amounts of vitamin D and, and self-medicate. And I think it's, it's just wrong. And if it was called a, a, a steroid, you wouldn't have this. It would be more, more controlled. So I think, we, and that's why, you know, our body is well set. I can go in the sun as much as I like, and I, as you may have noticed I've been in the sun, but my vitamin D isn't going to keep going up. It, my body knows when I've got enough. We have a system for controlling it when it yeah. comes from food or sun. We don't have any system to control it when we're having it as a, a pharmaceutical. Everything we've talked about has really been around um, bone health um, and the impact on fractures. Is that the whole role of vitamin D? Because I feel like lots of people are taking it because they think it's going to help with their general health. Yeah. And does that also mean that if I'm not worried about fractures, then I can keep taking lots of it because I don't think that's a very big risk for me? No, there's so much more to the research and there's so much more to how we think vitamin D works. So we spoke at the beginning, Jonathan, about its role in immune function, immune system function. And I think that's where research has been more promising for the use of vitamin D, even as supplements. Um, because, for example, with groups of patients who have, for example, Crohn's disease, which is a inflammatory disease, we see that those individuals benefit from vitamin D supplementation. In randomized control trials, they have a reduced risk of hospitalization and of complications. Now, if we think about this as a steroid that helps immune system function, in individuals who have complicated inflammatory diseases, it makes sense that supplementing with vitamin D could help to mitigate some of these problems. Um, another group that has seen some good outcomes in the VITAL trial is patients who have cancer. Now, not to prevent cancer, but if you already have cancer, taking vitamin D could actually help to reduce mortality risk. Um, now, again, this is in a subset of patients, so patients who don't have obesity, whereas patients who do don't seem to benefit. And that probably comes back to how the vitamin D is stored in tissues. So again, try to understand how this works in our bodies is really important. And so where I stand is like there is exciting evidence that this could be helpful in certain groups of people and really make a difference on the outcomes for those people. And so where does this leave the two of you on supplementation? I'm living in uh, a northerly climb, which is dark all winter. Um, and that is going to be true for you know quite a few of our listeners. Yeah. And I think they're getting this message that you're just not going to get enough from the sunshine during the winter. So you should supplement. That is the outside. Should they be supplementing? And if so, how much? There is reams of evidence that getting outside all year round is helpful for our health for lots of reasons, not just vitamin D. Now, if you get outside all year round, including in the summer months, being mindful of your skin tone. So some people listening to this, like myself, and definitely like Tim, can get outside and not wear a strong sun, sunscreen and not get sunburnt, right? Other listeners listening know that if they go outside for more than five minutes, <laughs> they will get sunburnt. Sunburn is always a risk factor. But if you can go in the sun and enjoy 15 to 20 minutes outside without sunscreen, 
without getting burnt, so with no redness, then doing that every day is recommended. Remembering that we accumulate vitamin D means that if we get enough sunlight exposure in the months when there is sunlight, right, um, then we'll probably have enough to carry us through the winter months. But if you're somebody who can't get outside, if you're somebody who has perhaps a really sensitive skin tone and finds it difficult to go outside, or if you're somebody who already has compromised health, so maybe you're an older person living in a care home, maybe you have Crohn's disease, or maybe you've just been diagnosed with cancer, then it may be worth speaking to your healthcare professional and getting some vitamin D supplementation because it could be helpful. But I will really, again, come back to this vitamin D toxicity. I've seen vitamin D toxicity and it's really not fun. There is a lot of influences online that are promoting very high levels of vitamin D. So the takeaway for me with the vitamin D is if you're one of these groups who could benefit, make sure you're getting the 400 international units in the UK. That's 10 micrograms. In the US, they recommend up to 800 international units, which is 20 micrograms. But really, if you're taking 400 international units a day in one of these groups, you could see a benefit. So I don't completely disagree with, uh, with Federica, <laughs> but I, I don't want to give the impression that everyone living in Northern Europe or Northern uh, northern parts of Northern America and Canada, you know, should be so dependent on, on vitamin D. I think we've evolved for tens of thousands of years to have the right conditions for our body. So we mustn't forget that. And if we have a diverse diet, then, you know, that's also going to help us. There are some conditions that, interestingly, I'm pretty convinced vitamin D can prevent. And one of those is... At Zoe, we know small changes can create big results. Subscribing to this channel is one such change. It helps us reach more people and lets us bring you more of the latest science on health and nutrition. So if this video has given you something useful, subscribing is the easiest way for you to give us a little back.